We're starting a brand new series today called Sticks and Stones. Who's ever heard that, that saying? Most of us have. Sticks and stones will break my bones, uh, but words will never hurt me. That is just such a not true statement. <laughs> because words hurt. Okay, words, words can hurt. And, and they can be very, very, very hurtful. As a matter of fact, words can stay with us many times uh, longer than the effects of words, longer than an injury. If I had a you know, stick that broke my arm, my arm could get healed. But sometimes the words would stick for years and years and years. As a matter of fact, I want to do a survey really quickly. How many of you in here remember something, whether it's good or bad, that someone said to you over a year ago, a word they said to you or about you? Who remembers words that were said to you over a year ago? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I'll raise mine. How about, put it back down. How about over five years ago? Raise your hand. Man, how about over 10 years ago? How about over 20? Anybody with over 20? Okay, with the people that are over 20, I'll ask you to put your hands back now. I'll ask you this question. How many of those words were positive that you remember? Raise your hand. Wow. Mm. Okay. How many of those words were negative? Raise your hand. Oh, my goodness. See, words, words are powerful. And there is, we'll talk about this. We're going to talk about the value of our words. But during this series, I want us to get a revelation of words. Words do mean something. And words are powerful. You had a story yeah, that, that one just, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, um, in high school, gosh, that was 20 plus years ago. 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, anyway, so, you know, 20, over 20 years ago, I remember um, just a little bit about my background, how I grew up. I, I grew up just really searching after God, and I wasn't perfect, you know, I made mistakes, but my heart, my heart was seeking Him. And so I tried to live my life that way, you know, through all of high school. And, um, you know, I got made fun of. You know, they would call me a goody-goody. And, um, you know, looking back on it now, I should have worn that as a badge of honor. But at the time, it really hurt because I wanted to be accepted. You know, we all want to be accepted. Even today as an adult, we want to be accepted by other people. And so those words hurt and stuck with me. You know, I, I, I still remember to this day that feeling of, of um, the talking behind my back and it would get back around to me and then making fun of me. And, and those were words, and they yeah. did hurt. Yeah, well, she was called a goody-goody. I was called a baddie baddie. <laughs> I was the exact opposite. She was like, good church girl. I was like, not good, not church guy. But I remember, some of you heard this story before, I remember being in high school and walking by, because exactly where I was walking, walking by, and there's, in my hometown, there's like this thing in the floor that has a lightning bolt, because I'm from Haskell. Haskell Haymakers has a lightning bolt, because Haymaker is not someone who makes hay. Don't ever say that. It is a <laughs> knockout punch, which has lightning in it. I remember walking by, and this girl said, hey, I said, hey Tom. I said, hey, because I had like a boss haircut. I was looking smooth that day. And I mean, I fixed it all. That is not funny. It was Tell awesome. Tell what the boss is. Explain what that uh, is. Well, Shave it's, really short. It's a mullet. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. It was only, cool then. It was cool back then. My number is shaved on the side of my head. I got it. I mean, I have number four shaved on the side of my head. It's painted blue on the side. And I am looking smooth. It's like spiked up on the top. Literally, my hair went down to about here. Mm -hmm. about <laughs> and it was awesome. And, uh, and so I'm driving about it. I'm like, I would have braided it and put it in a ponytail or something. Uh, if, I was, if I was your girlfriend. Yeah, you would have been oh. my girlfriend then. Uh, <laughs> you're right, I would have been. I would have probably. No, so, no, you wouldn't have been. You were a goody goody. And so I walked by. I walked by, and, and, and this girl said, Hey, Tom. I'm like, Yeah, it's already started. Chick Magnet. And the girl said, And the girl said, Hey, anybody ever tell you you've got a big nose? That stuck with me. I can show you the place where she said that. And, and words are powerful. As a matter of fact, we see it in the scripture. If you turn in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 18, words are powerful. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20, it says this. From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled. And with the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. What does that mean? Let's just break that down. It means the quality of, of your life is dependent upon the words you speak to some degree. The quality of our life is dependent on the words we speak. And, and we see that in Scripture. And it goes on and says this. The tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. God shows us that our words, the words that proceed out of our mouth, have power. It's a power two different ways. Power of life. Amen. But then they also have the power of death. You're like, well, how is that? How is that so? Well, if you look at this, 
In the beginning, when God created the universe, what did he do? God didn't go, woo, and wave his arms or do anything like that, did he? Go, like, hey, there it is. He didn't do that. What does the Bible say he did? Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, it says, and God spoke. Then you look at a few verses later, and he spoke, and everything happened again and again and again. What? By his speaking. The words that came out of his mouth caused everything to be created. Because the words of God have a creative force Amen. that go within him. And, and here's the deal. If you look in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it says, So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. If God's words have power, if we're created in his image, then our words have power. Amen. Our words have power of what? Of life and of death. And the deal is we choose whether it's life that comes out of our mouth or whether it's death that comes out of our mouth. Here's the deal. Is, is the thing is, is that when any truth of God is, is, is brought up or even brought back, because I think this truth that had been you know, hidden for a long time where people weren't doing this, then all of a sudden someone was reading in scripture and they read this and they got a revelation of it. I mean, words are powerful. What happens with any revelation of God is that people can take it to a, 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 too much of a degree. They can get where it's truth, it's truth, it's truth, but they can take it to a degree where it becomes not true. They Everybody get that? Or they exaggerate the truth. 95% of what they say may be good, but 5% may be off. And so because of teachers or preachers that have taken and gone 5% beyond, not, listen, not because they're trying to be nasty or negative or they're trying to do the wrong thing. They went 5% beyond because they really believe what they're trying to say. Yeah. And so they get into error because they go out of bounds. Amen. And because people... And they're trying to drive the point home. Yeah. Right? yeah. And because people have done that, some people have rejected the whole message of our words are powerful. Here's what I'm saying. Don't reject the message. Accept the truth and get it deep inside of you. And, and here's the deal. I, I want us to grab hold of when, when we look at this and when we talk about the, the power of our words because our words are powerful. But we go and we, we say things like, well, I'm just going to say it and make it come to pass. You know, like I would say, I want a red Corvette in my driveway. There's a red Corvette in my driveway. There's a red Corvette in my driveway. I tried it. doesn't work. <laughs> Who would like a red Corvette in your driveway? Yeah, well, I'll just say it. I'll just say it. I'll just, I'll just say red Corvette in my driveway. Red Corvette in my driveway. And it doesn't happen. Why? Because that same force and ability, God has the ability with his words to create. And what we try to do is we try to get God in alignment with our words. When the exact opposite, we should have our words in alignment with God. And in agreement with him and what he says. That's how we change our words. By saying, God, let my words line up with what your word is says and that's when power becomes available and today we're going to take a look at two thoughts of two thoughts today of what are the value of your words and we're going to look at two to focus on two different aspects of the value of our words do you want to say, say what those work movements were properly called oh oh yeah, yeah i will okay. okay the movement out there that, that has been taken through the excess is the the name it or claim it movement name it and claim it i just name it and i claim it i name it and i claim it or the blab and grab but if I say it, boom. And, and people just throw those away, but there's 95% truth in those. It's 5% of error. Many times scare us away yeah. from the 95% of truth. We, we are word of faith, okay? We yes. believe in speaking God's word and yes. getting in agreement with his word, not making he, him agree with our word. Amen. See, we don't have creative power to speak something into existence. We don't, we don't have like, the power just to create something out of nothing like God did, but what we can do is to get our words to agree with what God says, and that's what there, where there's life. And the yeah. opposite is true, too, is that if we don't agree with what God's word said, we're speaking dead. Amen. Amen. That makes sense? Yes, amen. That's so, important to get our lines, our so words our, lined up. Our words have value, and so there's two thoughts that we'd like to uh, talk about today. And the first thought is that if you're taking notes, you can write this down, that words connect us to God. Amen. Words connect us to God. And here's the thought. This is in your notes. Words are how God comes from the supernatural, and I would add spiritual, the supernatural spiritual realm where he lives to the natural realm where we live. Words are how God comes from the supernatural spiritual realm where he, he lives. He lives in heaven, right? Yeah. Um, Holy Spirit's here on the earth in us, but words are how he, he lives in the natural realm. It's where he comes into the natural realm where we are. And you're, maybe you're saying, well, wait a minute. That's, that's not true. 
Well, because, you know, sometimes we may think, well, Jesus, no, he's the one who connects us to God. And I would say, exactly, that's right. Jesus is the word. Amen. Look at John 1, 1. Let's see what it says. It says, um, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen. And it, this is not in your notes. I think it's on the screen. But if you jump down to verse 14, you might make note of this. If you take notes, verse 14 says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus is the word. Yeah. And so God sent his word. There was a gap, okay? There, there was a gap of sin, this big chasm the Bible talks about, a big gap that were, where man was separated from God because of sin. And so he sent Jesus, the word, to bridge that gap, right? Okay, so he sent his word. That's the words connect us to God. Um, Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent out his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. He sent his word, Jesus, and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. And so Jesus sent his word to heal. To, he, he sent the word Jesus to heal us and to save us. Yeah. So Jesus is the bridge. But how do we get saved? We have to walk across that bridge by through what? Through what avenue? Our words. Yeah. And so our words connect us to God. Okay, look at, I, I love what Romans, it, this will really drive the point home, but Romans 10, uh, verses 8 through 10. I love what this says. Is, in fact, it says, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. Mm. Read now, that again, read that again. That was good. Uh, in fact, it says, the message is very close at hand. It's, it's really close. It's right here, right? It's on our lips and in our heart. You see, you'll see all throughout the scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, that the Bible connects the heart and the mouth many, many, many times. And we're going to see this through this whole series, how the heart and the mouth are connected. It's, it's, it, that's the way God made us. It's the way uh, we operate. Okay, let's keep going. Verse 9. Oh, wait. Uh, sorry, back up to the middle of verse 8. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. Verse 9. If you confess with your mouth the Lord that Jesus is Lord... And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Look at verse 10. For it is by believing in your heart that you remain right with God. Look at this. And it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. Oh, yes. Our words are important. Our words connect us back to God. Amen. And so we see how God has sent Jesus to be the bridge. But in order to get back to God, we have to confess with our mouth. And how do we confess what's in, from our mouth? We confess what's in our mouth by what's in our heart. You see, we have to get into agreement with what God's word says. When we realize, okay, it's a revelation, but we get saved. It's a revelation that, that, that yes, okay, I believe, Lord, that, that Jesus, you are the Son of God. You died for my sins. You were raised on the third day. I believe that in my heart. And when I believe that in my heart, I truly believe it. What's going to come up out of my heart is... The confession. Yeah. You see that? You see the connection there? So what we truly believe in our heart, we're going to speak out of our mouth. Right? Yeah. And so and that's how we get saved. Our words connect us to God. You know, one of the things we do around here, and we just did it not long ago, is we have people raise their hand, make a decision for Christ, and we have them say a prayer. Saying the prayer is not that, you don't even have to say a prayer. Let me just say that. Don't we do that? Because it's one way of confessing. But we can just sit there and say, hey, how many believe Jesus is the Son of God? Yes. Yeah. Then it's say it. Heart. That yes. connects it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. A prayer is not, if you're sitting there and say, well, I'll say the prayer and everything will be okay. If your heart's not connected to your mouth at that point, it means nothing. It means zero. It doesn't mean a thing. But when your heart is connected with your mouth, then it changes the world. You're like, well, right. I've never prayed that prayer before. But maybe you said, I believe Jesus is my Lord. Or Jesus, you are my Lord. That's the point of salvation when your heart and your mouth hook up. That's right. And that's, that's what that's connects us. That can, yeah. You just sit there and say, well, I'm never going to say it. Then your heart isn't connected because your mouth's not connected. It is a joint effort yeah. between your heart and your mouth. Amen. Yeah. And so, uh, Roman, I love what Romans 10, 13 says. It says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Yes. You notice that call? Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, it's, you've got to speak it. You've got to call on him. And so, notice it doesn't say for everyone who's never made a mistake mm -hmm. and calls on the name of the Lord. It doesn't say that. Yeah. yeah. Everyone who is perfect. No, everyone. Isn't that good news? Yeah. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past doesn't matter what you did yesterday. It doesn't matter what you did an hour ago. If you call on the name of the Lord, the word, the word promises you will be saved. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Yes. Amen? Yeah, very good. Amen. Yeah. Well, there's, um, there's a, a, a passage of scripture that I'd like to, us to take a look at it's in, out of Matthew 12. 
And it's, um, if you don't read the whole context to understand what it's saying, it's kind of, it can be a difficult passage to understand, but I would like to take a look at it um, just for that reason. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm glad she's preaching this and not me. Because this section of scripture is, is uh, I mean, honestly, people get confused about it yeah. more than, I'd say more than almost any other section of scripture yeah. and what it truly means. And she's going to be talking about what is the unpardonable sin. The unpardonable sin. So let's, you all ready to dive into this? All right, let's go. All right. Seven of them are. Everybody else ready to dive into it. <laughs> who's, ever yeah, wondered, who's ever wondered about the unpardonable sin? Yeah, or ever thought you committed it. Or yeah. never yeah. wanted somebody to commit it, so you don't have to ever see it. No. The thing is, is, is that people read this, though, and they stop. See, Jesus is speaking in this passage here, and they stop, and they don't keep reading. Well, Jesus keeps speaking. Yeah. you got to read all of it. you got to read the verses before it. you got to read the verses after you got to have it in context. Okay. And so we're going to talk about that. But let's take a, a look at verse 31. It says every sin and blasphemy or evil speaking can be forgiven. That's what evil. That's what blasphemy means. Is evil speaking? Every sin and blasphemy can be forgiven, except blasphemy or evil speaking against the Holy Spirit, which will never be forgiven. Mm. Verse thirty-two. Anyone who speaks. This is Jesus talking. He says, anyone who speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven. It's interesting, isn't it? But anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, if either in this world or in the world to come. And most people just stop right there and they, they get confused and worried. They're like, I don't understand this. We'll keep reading. Let's keep reading and see what he says. Verse 33. He says, a tree is, is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good. If a tree is bad, its fruit will be bad. Now, the tree, what he's comparing the tree to is our heart. The tree is our heart. The fruit is what we speak. Okay, now you'll see this. Let's keep reading in verse 34. You'll see this in a second. You brood of snakes. I like that. That's yeah. funny. And here's, I, you brood of... Jesus said this. And he's talking to the Pharisees. Right, how many of you like this? Jesus, sometimes we see Jesus as this, this skipping around Jesus who's like Skittles and rainbows and everything's always nice and he never gets on to anybody. I like, I like the Jesus who makes a whip. The Bible says he fashioned a whip himself, and then he's talking to these guys, and he goes, he goes, I like, I like, old, I'm going to go all the old King James on He said, you brood of vipers. You can't say that in a nice way. Who would agree with that? Hey, guys, you're a brood of vipers. No, he was like, you brood of vipers. Jesus was not politically correct. If you want to politically correct Jesus, then you're not serving the right one. He was not politically correct, and he called them on it. He was like, yeah. this is serious, you brood of vipers. Wipers. Wipers. Yeah, yeah. Another story. Another story. I'm not going to tell it. Okay. I guess I'll have to come back. All right. Thanks, Carmen. Okay. <laughs> what? you got to tell that story. Not now. Okay. Come back next week. I still, I still might not tell it. Okay. Yeah. I don't even know if that goes along with our message. It does. It does. Right. Okay. Verse 34. We're taking continue on. You brood of vipers. You brood of snakes. How could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart, the tree determines what you say, the fruit. That's good. You see that? If you look at verse 33 again, a tree or a heart is identified by its fruit, what you say. Okay? <coughs> Let's keep going. Verse 35. A good person produces or speaks good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces or speaks evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. Now, he, Jesus gets real strong here in verse 36 and verse 37, but let's take a look carefully at what he says. He says, And I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. Bam. That's amazing, isn't it? The words Bam. we say, they're, they're powerful. They're valuable. They're being listened to. Wow. They're yeah. being listened to. By yeah. God. God yeah. hears every word we say. You're like, oh no, I was in the bathroom when I said that. He heard it. <laughs> he heard it. Every word. Yeah. Well, I would like to break this scripture, this passage of scripture down a little bit more and kind of give you an idea of what's going on. See, Jesus um, had just healed a demon possessed man. I think he was blind and mute. And the Pharisees are watching this, okay? They're watching everything that's going on. And they begin to either talk among themselves or they think in their heart. And Jesus, let me back up a little bit. Jesus hears them not. Not by hearing them with, he hears them through the Spirit of God, okay? He doesn't hear them with his ears, but it's revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. And see, when Jesus came to this earth, what did he do? He left heaven, which means he, he laid down his divinity, okay? He laid down his divinity. He became human, okay? And he took on human form. And so when he's ministering on this earth, he's doing it through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is flowing through him yeah. and doing these miracles, and he ministered to this man, this, this blind, this blind and mute 
demon-possessed man and healed him. And the Pharisees start saying, here's what they're saying. They're saying, well, he's casting out the devil by this prince of devils. And he turns around and he says, wait a minute, boys. What you're doing, you better be careful because what you're doing right there could send you to hell. You're like, whoa, what does that mean? Well, the reason why is that he tells them in here, he tells them, it's your heart. What's in your heart is coming out of your mouth and your heart in your heart is speaking evil against the Holy Spirit. You're speaking evil. You're speaking blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Now, let me say this. The Holy Spirit is the only person of the Godhead who reveals our need for Christ. Yeah. You get that? He's the one who comes and convicts us of our sin and reveals our need for Jesus. And he said, you continue to do that and harden your heart, that's going to send you to hell. Okay? Now, I've heard people say, well, you know, I, have I committed the unpardonable sin? If you're asking that question, I can definitely tell you no. Okay? Because, no, seriously, you're still seeking God. I mean, if you're in church here, you're seeking God. You're here. Okay? And maybe some of you are out there and you're believing for loved ones to come to the Lord. And as long as they encourage you with this, as long as there's breath in your lungs or their lungs, there's still hope. Yes. Amen? Yeah. And maybe they do have a heart and heart. What I would encourage you to, to do is to pray. Lord, begin to speak to their heart. Soften their heart. You know, Tom and I were talking about this, this whole thing about, we were talking about Paul. And he says, I was the chief of Pharisees. What did the Pharisees do? What did they do in this passage right here? They had hardened hearts. And, he, and Jesus turns to them and he says, it's your heart. You better deal with that. You need to deal with the heart because the heart is the issue. What's out of your heart, you're going to speak. But I, I'm pretty sure that you're not as bad as a case of Paul as Paul was. And when he was Saul, what was he doing? He was killing Christians and attributing their work to the work of the devil. Okay? What happened to Saul? We know what happened to Saul. He had miraculous conversion and began working for the kingdom of God, began working for Jesus. Is it true? Yeah. Okay. So there's hope. There's hope for all of us. There's hope. As long as you've got breath in your lungs, man, God can do a work in you and you've not committed the unpardonable sin. Now, the Bible says that it's appointed for man once to die and then comes judgment. Okay, that's when there's no hope. Okay, when you pass from this life to the next without Jesus, that's when there's no hope. Yeah. I've heard stories of people getting saved on their deathbeds. Yeah. You know, with their last breath, they believe on Jesus. As long as you have breath in your lungs, there's, there's still hope. Grace is big. Amen. Amen. Grace is big. Grace Amen. is so big. And, and I, you know, I think about this. Our words connect us with God. And if we have words, and you can see that. I mean, I can sit there and talk to someone in a conversation, and I can tell where they're at most of the time just by the words that That's come true. out of their mouth. Just yeah. by the words that come out of their mouth. And I want to say that if we want our words to change, we have to have our heart change. <laughs> and so how does our heart change? Our heart changes by changing our, our, our proximity closer to God. If I'm God's way over there and I get over here, what happens? I get around him and my heart starts to change. The further I am away from him, the harder my heart gets. But if I surrender to him, he changes my heart. And it changes my connection with him by the words that I say. Our words are powerful. There's death and there's life. And, and when we talk to him, let our words be glorified in him. Another way that we connect is, is our words connect us to God. But our words also connect us to each other. Our words connect us to the people around us. And, and it's so important that our words are connected to God and that we say things with, it comes from our heart. But if you look, our words and our relationships, uh, I mean, our relationships are all connected by words. Who can think of a broken relationship that you've ever had in your life or where you're like, I haven't talked to them in a year. You haven't talked to them in a year because a year ago, you guys said words or words were spoken that caused division among you. And words can they connect us or they can separate us. Yes. Depending on what words we say. Look at Proverbs chapter 18. We already went over verses 20 through, through 21. We're going to add a verse. It says, For the fruit of their mouth, from the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled, and with the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Verse 22. It says this. This is not an accident. This verse is right connected with the other two. It says, he who finds a wife finds what is good and amen. receives favor from the Lord. All the women said amen. Yes, amen. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. So here's what the deal is. God is talking about, you know, uh, it, your words are powerful. Your words are powerful. Your words are powerful. There's death. There's life in the power of your words. And then he immediately connects the power of our words to relationship. And he says, the power, your words are powerful. Whoever finds a wife finds a good thing. See, our words are powerful when it comes to our relationships. They did a study. 
And they, they studied couples who were married and those that had been divorced. And what they found out was those couples that had been divorced or had went through separation and were apart from each other, they spoke over double, over two times as many negative words to each other. That well. their words were always coming out negative toward each other. And they spoke more negative words to each other than they ever thought about speaking positive words. And so what happens? It caused them to disconnect. Yes. What caused them to disconnect? Their words caused them to disconnect. See, if we want to be connected, the power of our words is so vitally important. It's the way we connect to God, and it's also the way we connect to, to, to each other. Can I say something? Yeah. I forgot to mention this, but our words are so powerful. You know, the psalmist says, he, and he, he praises, he said, Lord, set a watch, set a guard over my mouth. I pray that. I need to pray that a lot. Yes. Y'all do too. Yeah. Just be honest. <laughs> we all do. You know, we're talking, we're probably getting this later in the series, but in James, in the, in the book of James, James talks about the tongue and how yeah. if, if you can control this unruly, unruly member, member yeah. then he, and you're perfect in what you say, he said, then that's a perfect man who can control your whole life. And we can't do it without the help of the Holy Spirit. That's yeah, just a so extra. I want to say this, when it comes to your words disconnecting with people, I pray for people, I'm going to have this, I'm going to have this conversation with my wife. Here's what I pray. Lord, show them what to say and show them what not to say. And the tone. And yes, the tone is so important. I love you, baby. That doesn't go over well. Man, those, that bill is so good. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. And so you have to watch everything that goes on. Why are you laughing? I love you. Uh, and so if you have a bad marriage, here's what I would say. You probably have bad words that are spoken between each other. If you have a good marriage, probably because you have good words. And you, What are you doing? Bad marriage, you speak death. Good marriage, you speak life. I don't have a good relationship with my kids. Well, how much death do you speak to your kids? Or how much life do you speak to your kids? Not just, that, that was good. Not just to them, but over them. That was really good. Not just to them, but over them. Our kids is going to grow up be nothing. Shut up with that. Choose life. When, when you don't understand, you don't understand they're doing this, this, and this. Don't give a rip what it's, they're doing. And it's hard. Honestly, sometimes it's hard to call those things that be not as though they were. Yeah. When they're acting a fool, you want to be like, well, you're a fool. <laughs> serious. Did you just say acting a fool? That was acting a fool. Bob or head. Um, no, but the other day, there was going to say, are you My back? son, you are wise beyond your years. <laughs> yes. Calling those yes. things that be not as though you they are. were. You are. Yes. The other day, Kim had to correct me on something. I did something that was really bad. I did. I was. Well, I've done the same thing. Yeah, just, we both have. But we, well, we. Telling it, I guess. She, she corrected me, and then one of our kids told a lie, and I knew he told a lie, and I was mad. I was mad at him, and I said, "You're a liar." I made that statement. You're a liar. She called me to the side. She goes, "Don't say that to him." I said, "Don't say that to him." I'm like, "Don't say what?" She goes, "Don't tell him he's a liar." That he's not a liar, he just lied. But him lying does not make him a liar. Yeah, Don't right. speak that over him that you're a liar. See, he made a mistake. I we, made a mistake. And she we're called, not perfect. She we called me to the it. side. Here's the deal. She called me to the side. Now, on certain days when she'd call me to the side and said, Don't say that, yeah. I'd have been like, I got a list of 50 things you shouldn't say. <laughs> and I'd be the same way. It's hard to take correction. Sometimes. But, but when, Those you're, times. but when your heart, but when your heart is connected to the Lord, Amen. and all of a sudden she goes, Don't say that. My heart, fasting. Thank you, Lord, for this fast. And fasting, praying, seeking the face of God. She said, you shouldn't have said that to him. He's not a liar. He just told a lie. And all of a sudden, I was like, you're right. And I remember I went to him, and I said, hey, I shouldn't have said that. I said, I was absolutely wrong in saying that. And then I said, will you forgive me? I ask for your forgiveness because I should never have said that to you because you are not a liar. There is truth that lives in you. Can I say something about that goes right along with that? Yeah. There are seven divine words to healing every relationship. You know how he's talking about words connect us to God? Here's the seven words I want to give you. I was wrong. Will you forgive me? Ooh, I was wrong. I had to do, I had to do this the other day with one of my children. I had blown off the handle about something. I was, you know what? I was stressed. That's not an excuse. And I realized it. I had, later I had to come in and I had to say, you know what? Mommy was wrong. Will you forgive me? You know, our kids are so gracious. Yeah. They're so forgiving. And he said, well, of course, Mommy. And you know, he gives me a big hug. And... But that's what we have to do. We have to yeah. humble ourselves. I have to humble myself sometimes with my kids and, and say that. But can I give you six words that fall short? 
of healing a relationship. Here's the, here it is, and there's it's 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 a little difference, but but it makes a huge difference. Like it's one word. I need to ask. If I agree, I need to ask your forgiveness. And so you're there thinking, okay, so we'll go ahead. And most of the time, when people say that, they never get around to doing it. So, I mean, you, you're sitting there saying, hey, go ahead and ask, ask for forgiveness. No. I was wrong. Will you forgive me? Own your stuff. Yeah. It's hard to do. Well, you own it, it breaks down walls. When you're, close to, when you're close to Jesus, it sure, sure helps you. Yeah, he'll point out your stuff to you, too. I mean, he will point out your stuff to you and say, you need to shut that up. Start saying this. I want to read another verse to you. We've got to close. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 26, it says, Husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. Who thinks Jesus loved the church a lot? Love the church. Love the church. And the Bible says, husbands, love your wives like Christ loves the church. Don't love your wives like a Hollywood movie. Yeah. <laughs> mm, that's good. Love your wives like Christ loves the church. Doing what? Laying down his life for it. So we are called to love guys. We're called to love our wives, future wives with this love that will lay our life down for Christ. Then it goes for, for them. Then it goes on and says this, verse 26. It says to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing by God's word. Washing by the water of the word. Once again, relationships. How do I show her I love her? One of the ways I show her that I love her is by speaking words of kindness and love and of caring and of generosity to her. See, our words build relationships and connect us. And so, you know, we have to work at this, something we have to work at. If you have a bad relationship, I would say this, it's because you're saying bad things. You're saying bad things to their face, or you're saying bad things not in their presence. You're going to tell other people bad things about your wife. Ladies, you're going to tell all your little girlfriends bad things about your husband. Well, come on. Stop it. Yeah. Just stop it. Yes. They're like, well, you know what? I, I don't know anything good to say about him. Maybe the only thing he does well is he wakes up in the morning. <laughs> and instead of, instead of talking negative, you're like, baby, I am so proud of you. You get up every day <laughs> at 10 or 11 o'clock. <laughs> you get up. You're an amazing getter-upper, baby. I am so... You get with your girlfriends. You know what my husband did today? You know what my husband did? He got up. <laughs> got up out of the bed. Well, it's you know, positive. Got up out of the, and so what do you do? You change the negative of the list of things he doesn't do to start praising the one thing he doesn't. Can I tell you a secret, ladies? Guys act like they're tough and strong. Guys have egos, and those egos are incredibly weak. They're just waiting for a, they're just waiting for you to build them up. He's like, I'm, they're, they're, I'm tough. I don't need you to say anything good to me. Yes, they do. And they're waiting for you to build them up. And if you just find one thing to build up, here's what will happen. One thing will build them up. It will change their, their attitude about themselves. And they'll do something. I got up. Yeah, babe, got up. I'm getting a shower now. You know what my husband does? He gets up and he gets a shower. He does that really well. Bought some deodorant. Yeah, he puts deodorant on. He's a, Start changing. And, and guys, let me say this. I about, bet they can find more than just that. They can find more. Yeah, look we can more, find more than more. that. We can find more than that, can't we, ladies? Yes. Yeah. Look for a place. Man. man, you picked up your socks today. Yeah. I didn't have to pick up your underwear today. Way to go, man. Good job. Instead of complaining about him not picking them up, the day he does, notice it. Man, I don't have, I, man, that was awesome, baby. You picked up your underwear. You know, I have, a degree in, I have a degree in education, and what we learned in classroom management is that positive reinforcement goes way further in, yeah. than negative. Yeah. And just what we're saying Okay, about guys, negative. how many That's of you rather have your wife encourage you than, than pick apart? Okay, guys aren't voting. Guys. Okay, guys. There are no women in the room. I think they're not here. How many of you rather have your little wives or ladies encourage you, and you would do more than them nagging at you? Raise your hand. Ooh. I'm raising both of <laughs> And my legs. <laughs> but it's the truth for all of us, isn't it? And your words build each other up. Your words build each other up. Gotta, i got to close. Why, uh, husbands, what do we do? We wash them with our words. We wash them with our words. The Bible says that. And my question would be, are you washing them with your words? Or are you disabling them with your words? Are you tearing them down? And with your words, are you doing it kindly and gently? Or are you doing it like, you know, like a, a, a sandblast? <laughs> I'm washing the paper so like Ouch. you need to quit this, you need to quit that, and, and you're blasting them because that like never you gets can say, You can say the word of God, you can actually be cleansing them with the word of God, but you're blasting at them. And it is that work. is that ever received? No. And so we have to change the words as the words we say. Our words connect us with who? With God? 
and our words connect us with each other. Amen. Here's what I'm going to say. I want to change the words. I remember going through a time where I would go to God and I'd complain about Kim. Lord, she's not doing this. She's not doing that. She's not doing this. And I thought I was being, I was, thought I was being holy because I was telling him all the horrible things that I thought she was doing, which none of them were bad, really. I remember the Lord told me one time, the Lord told me one time, he said, you quit telling me all the bad things about her. And I want you to start speaking life over her. And I was like, I'm telling you just what I see. He goes, you need to start calling those things that are not as though they were. And I was like, okay, I received this. And I can only do that. Here's the truth. I can only do that the closer I get to God. Because when I get to him, that's what good words, because my heart is, my heart is like in love with him. And that's what good words will proceed out of my mouth. Is when I'm plugged into God. I'm going to close with the story. This week, uh, you know, we're off the fast. How many of you started your fast on Sunday? You got to still fast today. I started mine on Saturday, and so I'm done. Woo! And but during this week and during this 21 days of fasting, just really sought God, gotten close to Him. You know, every time my stomach growled, I would, I would, God, I cry out to Him, and really affected my heart to where. I want to live a fasted life instead of just going through a time of fasting. And so I'm living close to him, trying to be as close to him as I can. My boys and I were running errands one day. We were done running errands, and they're like, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And I'm like, okay, there's this there's this Coney place right down the road. It's like a hole-in-the-wall Coney place. And I'm like, I'm going to take you there because they have awesome Coney's. And so we went in to get a Coney. And so we're going in to get a Coney, and we're going in as we're going in to get a Coney. We're walking in. And there's this older gentleman who gets out of his car. Uh, we get out before he does. And we're walking through the, the door. And he, he comes walking up. And we open the door for him to hold it open. We wait for him to get there. He said, like, you guys go ahead. Go ahead go in with your boys. And I'm like, no, sir. We're, I'm teaching my boys respect. I said, we want to hold the door open for you and honor you. Hold the door open for him. He comes in. He goes, thank you so much, young man. That was awesome. Young man. Yeah. <laughs> young man. Speak your words of life over me. And he said, thank you so much, young man. We go inside. And I was like, sir, go ahead. And he goes, no, I'm not ready yet. Go with your kids. And I take the two boys up there. And there's a guy waiting on us. And I start talking to him. And he's just really friendly. And I'm like, you are doing an awesome job. I said, man, I want to tell you. You're doing them. I just start talking to him. I just start saying good. I just start, man, you're doing amazing. I am just so, man, this is cool, boys. This guy's doing a great job. We get done with him. We go to the next one. That's this girl. And we start talking to her. Just start telling her, man, you're just doing a super job. Man, I, she had tattoos all over her arms. And she's just tatted up like two sleeves. And she has her hair in dreads. And I'm just like, yeah. I love the tats. Those are cool. And I'm like, do they hurt? Did that hurt right there? And she goes, no, it didn't hurt that much. I'm like, I would have one, but I heard they hurt. And so I just started, I was like, what about your dreads? Tell me about your hair. Your hair's real cool. And she's like, well, I did this so I don't have to fix my hair ever. And it looks like this. Like, that's a good thing. I'm going to grow my hair out. Robin cuts my hair. We're going dreads next time, Robin. And so I'm talking, and as I'm talking to him, as I'm talking to him, this older gentleman comes up to me with my boys. My boys are doing the same thing. Like, I like that. That's cool. And but, but the older gentleman comes up and goes, young man, he goes, can I tell you something? I said, yes, sir, you can tell me something. And he goes, young man, I think you're probably the most pleasant man I have ever met in my life. I was like, that's a cool compliment. And then he goes, can I ask, what do you do for a living? <laughs> I literally thought about lying. I thought about saying I'm a truck driver. And because people usually act different if you say you're a pastor. Like, they'll be cussing up a store. They're like, I'm a pastor. Like, well, praise the Lord. And that's exactly what happened. You've been cussing the last five minutes. Just keep cussing. Don't change because I'm a pastor. I'm still... And so he was like, I said, I'm a pastor. And he said this. He goes, he said, that is why, or that's the reason why. I understand now. And I said, no, sir. I said, no, sir. I said, I've met a bunch of pastors that are mean and nasty. I said, I have. I said, the only reason that I'm pleasant is because I spent time with God today. Yeah. And the girl was like, I saw that. You're very pleasant. And, <laughs> and you know what I did? I got, a chance, I got a chance to invite him to church. Yeah. Why? Because, man, when you get close to him, when you get close to him, good things come out of your mouth yeah. that bring life. Because you have a good heart. Because your heart's connected yeah. to an awesome father. Let's pray. How many of you struggle with this? You struggle with your words, being negative, with words of death. How many of you struggle with it? You need, God, you need prayer. Lift your hands all around the room. Okay. Make a decision first of all. I'm going to connect my heart to God. God, I'm going to spend time with you. I'm going to change my words. Some of you, some of you have been raised to be negative. Retrain yourself. Yes. It's possible. Instead of saying, instead of saying, I can't ever do anything, you say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What are you doing? You're, you're lining your words up with God's word. 
Instead of saying, I'll never be healed from this sickness, what do you say? By his stripes I am healed. Instead of saying, I can't pay my bills, what do you say? Philippians 4.19, but my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And you start to change the way you say, get your line, your words lined up with God's word. Lord, I pray for everyone. Everyone who struggles with this, all of us, yes. God, that we would speak words of life to each other, the ones we love, to even people we don't like very much. But we would speak words of life, and that, God, you would use us this week to be people who give life to others. In Jesus' incredible name, amen. 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 Everybody jump up on your feet. Let's be positive. Let's have words of faith. Let's connect our hearts and our words to God and our hearts and our words to people. So when you go out today, tell somebody their hair looks awesome. Your hair looks awesome. Yeah, someone's going to have a great...